Things are getting crazy. Welcome to the new world order. It's only going to get more out of control from here until we turn our republic and the rest of the world around. We've got criminals in charge. They've got a plan. But so do we. Restore the republic. Restore liberty. Restore basic human rights and dignity. Wow, we've got another unbelievable InfoWars Nightly News tonight. Imagine if the rest of the country and the world could see this. Sure, a million people or so a week see this show in one way or another online, and you, the subscribers to PrisonPunnet.tv, see it first, but that's not enough. The daytime radio show reaches three million, and that's great, but this nightly news show, the energy that goes into it, it's incredible, and that's why we're just in the process of developing and building it and preparing it to be launched on different television systems. But again, it is all you out there that support the show that make it all possible, and I want to thank you for being PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. You are underwriting this, this challenge to the globalists, this in-the-face attack on tyrants. Okay. Coming up, we're going to have guest Floyd Mori, a Japanese-American who heads up the major Japanese-American group that's concerned about the FEMA camps being built in the United States and represents the Japanese who were held and their property taken uh, during World War II, even though many of them have been here for over 100 years. Just incredible that uh, that went on. He's going to be joining us to talk about all these FEMA camp developments. And we've got unbelievable info coming up with Stuart Rhodes. They've confirmed that the feds are going around to canneries and places and asking who's buying storable foods. The government has been taken over and is preparing to wage war on the people on an even larger scale. And of course, that's all spelled out in the NDAA uh, action of Congress last week. Uh, we've got that. Uh, we've got uh, local news in Tennessee admitting the feds are going door to door asking about your preparedness. That's on channel uh, five, local, what is that, ABC. So it's going on, but we got details of this and then some other unconfirmed reports that I certainly hope aren't true. Uh, Stuart Rhodes is fleshing that out. He'll be joining us. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and get to Obama's chief financial advisor, the former head of Goldman Sachs. You notice every country being taken down financially is by Goldman Sachs operatives. This was the former head of it. He set up his own MF Global a few years ago and took people's private bank accounts from companies and banks and brokerage firms he took over. And then he quit and says he doesn't know where the money went. And he told Congress that today, I'm sorry, I don't know where the money went. <laughs> now we know where it went. It was taken uh, and given to elitists that were part of the Ponzi scheme that set up MF Global. Bill Clinton reportedly gets, what is it, $50,000 a month out of it, uh, but uh, they have $35,000 a plate dinner for Obama that Corzine puts on. I mean, the, the, what's scary is in the whole 150 plus years of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, now called uh, CMT, They've never done something like this. There's been a few times where people got their money taken, it was given back. Now they're just saying, sorry, you don't get it, and I don't know where it went. So we've got some clips of Corzine's taking the fifth statement. Could have just said, I'm taking the fifth, but I, I haven't been there. I don't know. I, I left you know, after the money was all stolen. But could I come back in a month and tell you? Uh, uh, and, and, of course, the congressman, most of, it, most of them asked softball questions. But a few did ask serious questions like, why is the head of the CFTC that, 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 that allowed you to do this, the federal agency, why is he your former lieutenant at Goldman Sachs, and why is he invested with MF Global? And, and, and why is he missing? These guys are all missing. He's been missing till this subpoena. So uh, here's that compilation of clips put together by our own John Bowen. While I intend to be responsive to the best of my ability today without adequate time and materials to prepare, I may be able, may be unable to respond to various questions members might pose. And as I said before, we've got to get better answers than this from you because you are the, the CEO. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. Corsine. Did you use client funds to pay for or to pay off MF Global's debts and bolster the $6.3 billion uh, purchase of sovereign European debt? that led to your bankruptcy. I'm going to repeat what I said before. I have no recollection whatsoever of client uh, monies being used, client, client monies out of the FCM being used to purchase Euro sovereigns. Again, 
the euro sovereign positions were held in the broker dealer. Isn't that just precious? Hey guys, on the fly here, try to look up uh, the Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing, I know, but this isn't funny. I mean, this is the top White House advisor. They're all a bunch of Chicago mafia. In fact, oh, you found the clip, go ahead. I know nothing, nothing. <laughs> it's, but it's funny when Sergeant Schultz does it. It's not funny when Corzine does it. It's not funny. In fact, the more I think about it, a show about a bunch of Nazis being funny isn't funny, but whatever. The point is, well, I guess it is because it shows a bunch of idiots, but look, look, look. This is out of control, and this guy thinks he's going to get away with it. And if they think they can get away with it, this is a trial balloon for every other brokerage firm and bank account and 401k and pension. And they're already looting the pensions in Europe. Private pensions, 100% your money. Not this thing of, well, public pensions, government employees, they don't really deserve that, even though it's their money. Now it's private pensions. Oh, you found Sergeant Schultz. Let's, let's hear him. Cue it up. Oh, brings it here into the bank. Oh, I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. <laughs> That's actually the head of the CFTC who's on the payroll of Corzine. I see nothing. I was not even here this morning. I've left the United States. By the way, the government could have snapped its fingers and paid back that $3 billion they stole. They don't care. They want to see if they're rat bastard, the guy running this whole thing, could get away with it. Oh, look, though. Donald Trump, Mr. Casino owner, will save us. We have a shot of this. Perry now. There's an auto refresh from the Drudge Report. Perry won't kiss the ring and Bachman will not attend, and I'm really proud of Ron Paul leading the pack uh, in not going in there. I mean, this guy is a joke. Declared bankruptcy how many times? And he's going to tell us about fiscal, gives two to one to the Democrats, says he's a Republican. He's a ringer, and he's a joke, and I told you he'd drop out of the presidential race as soon as Trump got the casino concessions from Obama's man in Chicago, Mr. Eargun Commander. Mr. Rahm Emanuel. I mean, it, what a pack of criminals. By the way, we had Fox on, we had CNN on, we had TVs recording today, and we had C-SPAN on. And, 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 and John Bowne was watching on all the channels for reports tonight on this and recording them. And right when Corzine, on TV and the internet, uh, at the, during his testimony with hard questions, it just cut out and C-SPAN said, you'll have to go to get C-SPAN 2 to our website. We're discontinuing coverage of this that everybody's trying to watch. And uh, so we had to, and then it was down for about an hour, and then we had to later find the archive of it. So they also pulled the plug uh, on this report today, and we have that. Should we play the video with the audio of that? There's not, but, but he was able to find the online archive where they did it, where they just... They just cut it out. So, again, I know nothing. I, I, I say nothing. I see nothing. I hear nothing. Three little monkeys all lined up. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about it, but it's more like gallows humor. I mean, when does this end? Okay, there's article number one. we got about 30 more to go here. Moving on along here, ladies and gentlemen. I know you're sorry. It's okay, Corzine. Go ahead and take all those farmers' bank accounts. You, you, you know, you care. Uh, continuing, um, we have a tip. We're going to talk to Stuart Rhodes about coming up later. National Guard unit stands down uh, after firing on Americans uh, questionnaire. Uh, that's going on. And the next report is a big, big deal. I knew this a few years ago from our sources, and I'm on record saying it. But now it is confirmed. CBS News is reporting ATF plotted to use fast and furious to demonize Second Amendment. ATF created the problem so they could be the solution to it. That's a quote from CBS News. Documents obtained by CBS News show that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, ATF, discussed their covert operation, Fast and Furious, to argue for controversial new rules about gun sales. And they were shipping the guns directly into Mexico and drug money and cocaine um, back into the country. By the way, even the New York Times ran a whitewash. Well, they have to launder the money and bring the drugs in to track it. Uh, all 370-something billion of it in Wachovia and Wells Fargo alone. You know, it's just to track it. Yeah, they're storing all that money at the local crack house or down in Mexico. Sure they are. 
the criminals that run our government run Mexico and run those drugs through it and destabilize that country on purpose to wipe out the drug cartels they didn't control. That's what's going on. That's the facts. These are mafia who are so arrogant now, they're stealing people's private accounts and getting away with it. Doesn't go to jail like Bernie Madoff. No. I'll tell you, there's a limit though. What's that uh, Johnny Cash song? You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, but sooner or later, going to cut you down. I'm not. God's going to do it. The universe, karma, reap what you sow, whatever you want to call it. So big news on that front. I know Aaron Dykes in the first half of the news last night covered this, but it is now confirmed. Go read the CBS News article. Go get the Infowars.com article. Get it out to everybody you know and say, see here, false flag, staged event against America. Confirmed. And of all places, the Communist Broadcasting Center a blind hog actually finding an acorn. Wow, good job, CBS. Never thought I'd hear that. Okay, continuing here uh, with the news. Mysterious company buying up U.S. gun manufacturers. And this is out of San Francisco Chronicle. And it's reportedly connected, they believe, to a group headed up by Soros. So, so if you... If you and, and the New York Times is also reporting on it. So, so if you can't shut down the gun companies legislatively, and you can't do it by blocking imports, they've already done that, well, you just go buy them up and shut them down or have them become mouthpieces for gun control and to add biometrics to the guns, and that is the plan. So this is a maximum alert. And again, sfgate.com is the San Francisco Chronicles uh, website name. And again, you, know, you saw that that was them reposting the New York Times. I saw this today, didn't read it properly, and thought, saw it was the Daily Bell, which is a good website, but I wasn't sure. And then now I find out it's New York Times. It is confirmed. In recent years, many top-selling brands, including the 195-year-old Remington Arms, as well as Bushmaster Firearms, um, leading makers of military-style semi-automatics, have quietly passed into the hands of single private company. It's called the Freedom Group, and it's the most powerful and mysterious force in the U.S. commercial gun industry today. Never heard of it. So we're going to continue uh, to investigate all of this, and we're going to look into it very, very deeply. You know, when we said three years ago that um, Media Matters, so-called independent watchdog run by Obama, was uh, run by Soros, they denied it. Now it's admitted he finances it. And the word is from researchers at the Daily Bell is that it's connected to it. We're going to look into it. We're going to find out. Uh, continuing, uh, here, here is the Daily Bell article. With more Second Amendment right to self-defense news, while the government's arming of the teeth against us and then wanting to get our guns and selling guns to Mexican drug gangs to blame it on the Second Amendment, with more on that, I heard local talk radio and, and saw national TV this morning criticizing a woman in Redding, California, as a guy busts in her house, she calls 911, she warns him, she shoots him once, twice, three times, he keeps trying to come in and finally dies. And the media is like, should this woman have bought a gun and should she have shot the guy? And you, and you look at a photo of him, he had a bunch of prior arrest. He looks like he's on PCP and, and, and you know half the other drugs uh, that are out there. I mean, there he is, totally crazed. Uh, police try to dissuade elderly woman from defending herself against home invasion. And the 911 operator is like, well, police are coming, you know, be careful, you know, don't shoot. You might shoot them. You know, they're on their way. Whatever. The point is 911 can't protect you, won't protect you, and there's no duty for police to, uh, to protect you. Do they do a great job sometimes? Certainly. But the average 911 time is about 12 minutes, okay? We have guns here. My house has guns. We're going to protect ourselves, period, end of story. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this chilling 911 tape. It's an example to all men and women. It's time to arm yourselves in this depression and exploding crime wave, and it's time to kill people that try to come into your house and do you harm. You have a right and a duty to defend yourself. Here it is. A Northern California woman discovers a man breaking into her home. She grabs her gun and her phone and confronts him. He's banging on the window. Mm. Okay, okay. I've got a gun. I'm going to get my gun out. Ma'am, what are you arming yourself with? Oh, God, I just bought it. It's a 38. He's coming into my front yard. Oh, God, he's coming through the window. 
Oh, I'm going to shoot him again. No, no ma'am, don't. Well, he's right there. There he is. I'm going to okay. shoot him. He's okay. Oh, ma'am, listen, listen. The officers are in the area. I don't want you to fire your gun. He's coming through the window. Lay me up. He's coming in. He's coming in. Is he is coming into the house? Yes. I got him. You shot him again? Yes, I Or you did. shot at him? No, I shot him. He's coming through the window. Okay, two shots. Oh, my God. He's on the ground. He's on the ground. The suspect, 37-year-old Jesse Theus, is shot dead. And I see lights coming. Oh. Can you, can you walk to the front door? Yes. Oh, God. I hope it's somebody I know. So there you have it, and uh, now the media is demonizing the woman for defending herself. She was just supposed to sit there. I mean, he's bust again. She says, don't do it. She calls 911. He, he gets in. He, she shoots him once. He keeps coming twice and then three times. And the media is like, hey, don't do this. Just let us ship guns into Mexico and take your guns. How's that sound? Uh, so we've got that piece of news right there. Uh, continuing now, we reported this back on 9-11 that they dumped veterans, military police that were there, firemen's bodies, but also the citizens that were dead in the landfill. And the media said, just shut up, it's okay. And now uh, it has been confirmed, when I first reported this a few months ago, the latest round, people didn't believe it, but it's confirmed, uh, U.S. News World Report, MSNBC, they're all reporting, USA Today, Air Force dumped remains of 274 troops in landfill. I mean, yeah. The big banks and insurance companies for 12 years have been taking people's death benefits, stealing them. That's what they think of you. The bankers wrap all their tyranny in an American flag. In fact, some people would say it's okay to throw in a landfill as long as it's wrapped in an American flag. I mean, you know, everything is about the American flag, but never what the American flag supposedly symbolizes. So just incredible uh, news on that front. And finally, a federal judge says a Montana blogger is not a journalist even though she was acting as a journalist and considered herself one, they're saying if you're not affiliated with a mainstream media group uh, in his ruling, uh, that you don't have any First Amendment protection and you, you have to reveal your sources, basically. And we're seeing more and more of this. Well, I am truly alternative media. I, I own my own operation and run it. But I'm on AM and FM, XM, all this stuff. But someday, if I wasn't on all that, would I then, after 17 years on the air and winning all sorts of journalism awards, like the Project Censored Award, would I be journalist? Would I be a journalist? Would my First Amendment have value? Could I protect my sources? Another uh, strike, another nail in the coffin of the First Amendment. Okay, I want to, in conclusion in this segment, before we come back, uh, with uh, the head of Oath Keepers and uh, the head of the Japanese American group concerned about the FEMA camps. I want to go to a report by Darren McBreen, and then from that report, we'll go out to break and come back. But I just wanted to point out that this man on the street has no man on the street. Here in Austin, Texas, normally on any other subject, he can get plenty of people to talk to him. But on the subject of the TSA groping people, he had to spend an hour trying to get people to talk to him at the airport because they're scared. And in this case, almost all of them refused to talk and said, oh, my God, the government will get me. They're watching. And McBrain's like, well, go to the website, learn about it. I won't even look at that. They'll get me. And so when he went out and tried to talk about, have you heard about the NDAA uh, bill where they want to arrest Americans, the military, hold them indefinitely? Are you concerned about that? And they'd say, yeah, we're concerned, and we're not going to talk to you. So I guess the tyrants are winning. That land of the free, home of the brave. Hey, can you talk about a bill about the Army being used in America and arresting citizens? No, mister, I better not, because they'll get me. And uh, this was downtown in the business area of Austin, Texas. People wouldn't talk to him. So I guess you can't have man on the street, because people of America and the people of Austin, Texas, are uh, too busy uh, you know, not wanting to soil their adult diapers. It's very, very sad. And let me tell you, appeasing tyrants is not going to defeat them. Here's the report. We're going to come back with Stuart Rhodes and more. Stay with us. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Insider documents recently obtained by InfoWars reveal the current and ongoing operations to staff FEMA and U.S. Army camps inside the U.S. 
According to our sources, KBR is contracting services for temporary fencing and barricades, along with other services required for temporary emergency environment camps. They're to be located in five regions of the United States. Now this comes immediately after the Senate passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which allows indefinite detention of American citizens. All this at a time when economic conditions and mass demonstrations sweep through the country and threaten potential unrest. The government has patiently put into place the crucial elements of its police state grid and plan for the internment of political enemies. We are literally one false flag terror attack away from the plan going live. As the Department of Homeland Security and establishment media keep telling us, the next terror event will be on American soil and carried out by domestic patriot political groups, not Al-Qaeda. The FBI and the CIA have a long history of creating domestic terrorists, you know, patsies, and shifting the blame over to their political enemies. It's all there. All the government documents, all the government admissions, a civilian inmate labor camp program, run by the army, where they're at, all the details down to how they're going to break the families up and where the children go and the forced inoculations and everything. I mean, it just boggles the mind that all of this is happening. The fact that detention camps are being constructed inside our country and are now being staffed and readied for emergency situations, what can no longer be ignored or ridiculed as a conspiracy theory. Senate committee hearings and official Homeland Security documents further illustrate the mindset of our federal government as they classify homeschoolers, gun rights activists, constitutionalists, and returning veterans as potential terrorists. By default, creating an entire nation of radicals and revolutionaries, where everyone is a suspect, equally guilty until proven otherwise. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Well, great job, Darren. Well said. It's happened everywhere else. It's happening here. Criminals have taken over, and they've got to bring in a police state or they're all going to go to prison. Now, we can stand up to these people, or we can let them take us into a new dark age. We'll be right back. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later, bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul, do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. And we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. We're about to talk to Stuart Rhodes. We're going to get into Oath Keepers Alert. Federal agents demand customer list from Mormon food storage facility. And that dovetails with an article out of News Channel 5 mainstream in the same state, Tennessee, where they're coming to your door to ask about your storable food. They want to know what food you've got so they can confiscate it. God help us from these criminals. It's not going to be enough to take your bank account. The globalists want to break everybody fully, financially, so you can be re-educated in their new socialist collectivist system while the bankers sit offshore. And with more on the unfolding police state, the National Defense Authorization Act, the incredible FEMA documents that we've gotten where Kellogg, Brown, and Root is moving to actually staff the FEMA camps, the ones they built in 2006 with that $380 plus million dollar contract, is Stuart Rhodes. Uh, he, of course, is a constitutional lawyer um, with a degree from Yale, wrote his main seminal papers on a police state takeover system. And of course, he worked for Congressman Ron Paul for many years. If you don't know what Oath Keepers is, it's uh, police and military that are simply saying that they're going to stand up 
for the Constitution Bill of Rights and fulfill the oath that they've given to protect and defend this country's liberties and freedoms from enemies foreign and domestic. And that's important because the Bill of Rights, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, that is a birthright. The greatest and most successful experiment in liberty in history. And it's an idea. And you can't kill an idea, but you can suppress it and eradicate it and keep people from learning about it. And so America isn't America anymore if the Bill of Rights and Constitution and the idea of the Declaration of Independence is overthrown. And so that's what's happening. But by speaking about it, by reaching out to others, by listeners and viewers out there learning the Bill of Rights and Constitution and teaching it to others, we breathe life into the spirit of 1776. And Stuart's also an Army veteran and uh, was retired medically from a pair trooping accident. Again, that's his full bio, the short one. Stuart, good to have you here with us. We've got some major breaking developments here confirmed. Oath Keepers alert. Federal agents demand customer list from Mormon Food Storage Facility. That's A. B. News Channel 5 out of Tennessee. The government's conducting door-to-door -door preparedness checks where they push vaccinations, everything else. They've got knock and talk all over the country where the government's trying to force their way in to, quote, inspect your guns for your safety. And then you've got another report you're trying to confirm right now uh, where it looks like they're trying to get military to fill out questionnaires about firing on U.S. citizens. Of course, we know about Arcadia, Iowa, two years ago where they did do gun confiscation drills. That was admitted, so we know this is going on. Stuart, so much happening. Uh, let's get into the food uh, alert first, then we'll get into the Tennessee situation, and then we'll get into uh, your view on this whole FEMA camp uh, activation situation. Well, in Tennessee, our chapter president there heard from another veteran that uh, a local Mormon cannery that he uses to buy food storage from uh, was visited by two federal agents who demanded the customer list of everyone who's ever bought food from them. And the, the cannery manager said, hey, we don't do that. We don't keep lists. And they said, well, we want receipts. We want credit card receipts. We want to see you know, who's buying food. And he said, we don't do that either. We do cash and carry only. And they were very agitated and upset and left. Had the and feds ever heard of a, of a warrant before or a subpoena? Well, that's a good question. So, you know, that's a good question. But Rand went down in person and talked to the cannery manager and confirmed this one. So this one is totally confirmed. Um, it's legit. And so we have to wonder why is it that while we have on the one hand FEMA telling you to get prepared and we have Tennessee, you know, running around and doing door-to-door -door checks to make sure people are prepared. But on the other hand, you have federal agents who are telling us that they regard anybody who stores food as, as a potential terrorist. We already had the leaked um, FBI uh, memos that are going around to to, to surplus stores and gun shops, having them spy on anybody who, who stores MREs, who buys you know, large packages of MREs, for example. And so they're telling us what they don't like. You know, apparently, it's a schizophrenic situation. You've got government agencies telling you to get ready, but then you have you know, the FBI and DHS running around trying to keep tabs on those who are getting prepared. And so I think that's an indicator of you know, both the good and bad within the, within the government. You've got good guys there. Like in Tennessee, we know that the local officers who are doing the door-to-door -door checks for preparedness there have very good intentions. We talked to one today. He said, hey, I'm a patriot. A lot of us are patriots. This is not a Fed-driven thing. This is a state, state deal to make sure we're all squared away. But we have to worry about how that information will be used when the feds come in, as they, as they oftentimes do. They come in and take over local law enforcement and, and stick their nose in it, and then, they, then they, they grab those lists and use them for their own purposes. Well, that's right. They're wanting to know a food to commandeer during an emergency, and that's not just my opinion. They use well-meaning agents to go out, just like the well-meaning people from the census getting your GPS coordinates at your front door. Now we know that was given to law enforcement of where to send the feds in to hit the right front door and to have the address marked properly so they don't hit the wrong houses. I mean, this is incredible. And we know from executive orders uh, that, 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 that we've listed here, you can pull them up, uh, where they talk about hoarding of food being something that's going to be an arrestable offense under an emergency. And, and you're right, it is schizophrenic. It's just like people inside government have blown the whistle on Fast and Furious, uh, now the memos have been leaked and, and confirmed that it was to be blamed on the Second Amendment. That, that's huge. This was a false flag. CBS News now reports to be blamed on the Second Amendment. So, yeah, you've got part of the government saying get ready, and then you've got the other part that is, is authoritarian, always up the chain, who then wants to know who is actually ready, because the truth is the globalists want us all dependent. 
Well, certainly. I mean, look at look at what's happened to our to our people and our states. There's been a, a sucking away of power from the people and from the states. And you have you know like Southern Poverty Law Center and other propaganda arms of DHS running around and demonizing anybody who dares to get prepared. We had a preparedness expo here in Kalispell this last summer, and they did a feature article on that. That was a big deal to them that we had a preparedness expo. And so, you know, oh my they gosh, they're buying sleeping bags and water filters and storable food. I mean, ants store food squirrels store it humans have always done it and now being a normal human is evil the war depression all this stuff unfolding and and, and, and FEMA billboards saying store food and, and every week they've got a new preparedness expo they're demonizing on the Southern Poverty Law Center website I mean wow these are really wicked people and, and the thing about the cannery is, is, well, you might explain away the, the FBI going to surplus stores and whatever. You know, you might buy, like, like maybe they might, might buy ammunition or night vision goggles to be used in a terrorist attack. How can you explain and justify federal agents going to a Mormon cannery? I mean, it, it's powdered milk and, and wheat berries and, and chocolate mix for the kids and fruit punch mix. Who is going to be storing that? You know, Al-Qaeda is not going to store Well, that's right. The FBI food. might go into some giant Army Navy store back when they still had them because the surplus program and say did anybody buy like 20 paperweight old you know defused hand grenades because somebody could use that to try to make a bomb i mean that's the kind of thing they might pass out a memo saying if somebody ever comes in and buys all your hand grenades maybe you should contact us but 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 this is powdered milk they from the start, you've got the article at OathKeepers.org, we've got it up at InfoWars.com as well, but from the start, breakdown, you got the call, you did the research, uh, exactly what's going on at this cannery, where it's located. Well, it's in Tennessee. I, I don't know the exact location. Our, our Tennessee chapter president, Rand Cardwell, uh, could confirm that. He went down uh, there. Well, he was concerned. He didn't want to say it was in Tennessee at first, but because Tennessee has been the focal point for DS, you know, the, DS, the TSA doing random checks on the highways, he thought it was important to let people know that it looks like Tennessee, you know, might be being used as a test case. And so he went ahead and disclosed where, you know, it was a, it was a Tennessee cannery. And he just got word from another veteran. So here's the thing: is the Mormon Church will oftentimes let non-church members come into a Mormon cannery and you know buy bulk food like wheat and then can it number ten cans. They do that because they want all Americans to get prepared and have food storage. And so you have many non-members going into a Mormon, Mormon cannery and buying food. And so the feds came in and, and wanted to know everybody, not just the Mormons, but everybody else, anybody who's bought food storage. Now, why would they want that? You know, if they're looking for an investigation of a particular person, they would come in and say, hey, did this person come in here? But they asked for the whole list. You know, it's just, you have to face reality. It's not some kind of benign, you know, they're not there to check up and be sure you're all getting ready. They're not there to make sure you're getting prepared. They know they're getting prepared. They want to know who they are. And by the That's way, the we point. have, exactly, we have the memos that are public for the last five years where they go into all the gun shops and say, are people here buying guns that are missing fingers? And they're, and they're going into farming supply and saying, is anybody missing fingers? I mean, how many farmers do you know? I'd say a third of them are missing fingers. I mean, th th this is, I mean, I've grown up in the farming community. A lot of people are missing fingers. Sometimes you're at a table with five people. Two people are missing fingers you know, from farming accidents. And it's just such a wide net where everybody's a terrorist. This is incredible. What does your gut tell you, Stuart, uh, is really going on here? Well, I think Tennessee is a test case, and, and that's my suspicion, is that they're looking at Tennessee, because Tennessee has a lot of pretty hardcore, hardcore patriots in it, and uh, they might be they're using this as a test case. But even besides that, I think what they're doing is, is a trial run to see, you know, what they can do, what they can't do. You know, do the canneries keep customer lists, which ones do, which ones don't, things like that. I think this is a pre precursor to what's to come. And so I urge anybody who does preparedness, you must get prepared, but try to do it as, as, um, as anonymously as you can. And pay for pay with cash. Don't make it easy on them. And then they're making their yeah. They want to know who's clear. awake, and they want to know where the food is so they can commandeer it during an emergency. Yeah, they want to know who's switched on and, and who's going to bother um, buying preparedness gear. Those are, I mean, look at look at it like this. If you were looking at a population from the perspective of a future military conflict and you're going to try to crush them and subjugate them, what would you want to know? You'd want to know where the food is. It's like, just like Stalin did. He went and, and he starved out the, the farmers who were resisting him. He starved, confiscated all of their, their crop and starved them to death. That's what he did to them. And so food, you know, denial of food is a weapon of war. Well, That's the UN said, the UN said at the 96 food conference, 
or was it 97 in Beijing, the head of it said, we will use food as a weapon. You can pull up that quote, uh, Kissinger on the State Department Memorandum 200 said we'll use food as a weapon worldwide. You're absolutely right, Stuart. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how it goes. And so if, if you're looking at a, a future um, population that you know is going to resist what you have planned for them, which is S 1867 and, and detention of American citizens and destruction of our Bill of Rights, then you would want to, if you're a military officer or, or, a, or a federal agent, you would want to find out who's switched on, who's getting ready, who is your potential pool of resistors. That's why they keep track on veterans. That's why they want to monitor who's storing food. If you buy a radio and go to a ham radio class, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they have a, a checklist on those. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do those things. You should do all of those things. But just be aware of the the intent that they're expressing. They're giving you a window into their heads of what they think of you and what, they're, what they fear. They fear prepared Americans. They yeah. fear Americans who are, getting, who are getting ready. Let me add this before we get to the few other issues we've got here, Stuart. I appreciate you joining us on short notice with your incredible intel out there with the veterans and current military and police feeding you so much information. A lot of it we get fed the same info, but you focus full time on this. The ATF now, and we knew about this before it came out from our sources, but now it's confirmed ship guns directly into Mexico and drugs back into the U.S. and launder the money. That's even in the New York Times Sunday. Uh, to then blame the Second Amendment. That has now been released that they were uh, blaming the Second Amendment. CBS News has reported it, has confirmed it. They have the internal memos. So that's a false flag for those that don't know what that is, a staged terror attack against our Second Amendment. So that's happened. We have a government that's passed a law saying that the military can be used anywhere in the U.S., it's a battlefield, and they can arrest you without charges, and you can disappear into a black hole. So, so the worst has happened on paper. So, so there's no more speculating. And you add all this other stuff to it, it's just, man, every generation or two runs into a real bona fide tyranny. And we've just got to come to grips with the fact we've got a really nasty case of cancer in this country politically. And it happens everywhere. And, 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 you know, the fact that we're like dodo birds that never have experienced tyranny in the last few generations and don't know how to recognize it, we're like domesticated so the sailors can walk up and whack us on the head. Uh, you know, but we've, that's why we know history, though, we're not doomed to repeat it. We're not domesticated animals or animals that have never seen tyranny before. Historically, humans can think we can look back at things instead of living it ourselves. But there's no doubt they know they're imploding the economy. They're gearing up for war with the American people. And now that brings us into the NDAA and, this, and these FEMA documents we were sent. We talked to the contractors, and I've got other information I can't reveal or it'll give away some of the information we have. But we added into the uh, other documents we have. This is the covers, illegal aliens or emergencies or, or, or tornadoes or whatever. But on top of it, it is for political reasons or bio-releases. Uh, similar to what we got from the clergy response team documents. So this is the biggest escalation ever in all 50 states of people on full-time pay. They've never done this. Full-time pay in every state to respond within 72 hours to a disaster and have cordons and barbed wire and all this and, 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 and meal service and everything. So it's on. And uh, this is a real red level crisis. I mean, e either the government, Stuart, knows a comet's coming in a year, and I'm not saying that's what's happening, or they know there's an economic uh, implosion uh, coming down the road. So I want to get your take on the NDAA dovetailed with these new uh, ha Halliburton KBR uh, FEMA camp activation uh, setup. Well, that's it. We have, it's a two-pronged situation we have. We've known for, we, we've been hearing from within the military and within law enforcement that the federal government is preparing for an economic collapse. And that's, that's plainly coming, and they know it. They're just not getting the, pe the people prepared. In fact, like we said earlier, they're keeping track on those who do. And then the other side of it is, is they are destroying the Bill of Rights. And that's the thing. I don't care if you think we're a conspiracy theorist. Go read the bills, and then go read the Hamdi decision in 2004. Go look at the, the, the Padilla decision in, in the Fourth Circuit, um, even before that, and go see with the precedents that are already in place in all all three branches of the of the federal government the executive branch the legislative and judicial have committed treason and consider you the american people to be just like the iraqis they want to do the same thing to you they do over in iraq just be able to come black bag you or use a predator drone against you obama's already done that to two american citizens one a 16 year old kid and so they're already telling you that they're going to destroy the bill of rights and you're going to lose it unless you stand up against them and they know an economic collapse is coming and they're getting ready for that 
are gearing up. We hear rumors from across the country from police that they're seeing like you know crate loads of, of shotguns coming in and extra ammunition and things like that. Well, wait, um, we've seen the mainstream articles about even non-policing federal and state agencies are getting riot shotguns. I mean, absolutely. That, yeah, yeah, that's that's, right. that, that's confirmed. So, but but you know, cases of them coming in, and and so so all of this is happening. The, the American people need to understand that we are precisely in the same situation the founding generation was in like 1774. They are they have already done many of the same things the founders listed in the Declaration of Independence as being the reason for taking up arms and rebelling against the king and parliament. Denial of a jury trial, being spirited away across the seas. In our case, it's Gitmo, uh, being subjected to a jurisdiction foreign to their constitution. In, in our case, it's the international laws of war, which are foreign to our constitution. They're trying to impose upon us. They're not country. even following the international laws, though. They're not even following Geneva. I mean, you're right. But, but, but look, if you study the founders as I have, I know you have, it's very in, informative and uh, riveting. I don't even want to call it entertaining. But if you study the letters, the articles, even the British histories, because I've, I've read both angles of it and the French, so three angles, you look at it, people early on, 17... 45, 50, 60, 65, there were people warning, hey, they're not giving us our basic rights as Englishmen. Magna Carta is being violated. This is going right. to grow. This is going to get worse. Oh, shut up. You're just being anti-patriotic. And by the end, it was because there were people in 15 years of committees of correspondence, what I'm doing, what you're doing, what Ron Paul's done, because they were there warning when it all came true, that was why you had a hardcore group that understood what they were facing. And I think that's our ace in the hole, Stuart. Closing comments on that, and then this unconfirmed uh, report you've got of, uh, we know they've done this before, but National Guard and a drill and a, and a questionnaire, would you fire on citizens, and uh, people saying, no, we're not going to do this. And uh, I mean, I know you're looking into that, but the latest on that. Well, one point on the laws of war is, yes, they, they, they are using that as justification for, for stripping away the Bill of Rights. But as you said, they're not even following the laws of war because they're asserting that you're an unlawful combatant and that, therefore, they don't have to give you a, you know, detain you as a POW or, or give you any kind of due process, even under the international laws of war. But that doesn't make a difference to me. The Bill of Rights is what we are, like you said, entitled to as a birthright. I don't care if they gave me um, all the proceedings under the international laws of war and under the Geneva Conventions, that's still a violation of my right to jury trial. That's still gone. So all of that, to me, is absolutely illegitimate. It should be plainly illegitimate to everybody else out there. And all the military and police, you need to go read the treason clause. That tells you exactly what must be done with an American accused of making war against his own country. End of story. If it's not that, a jury trial with two witnesses to the overt act, it is unconstitutional. And I don't care what the Supreme Court says. The Supreme Court ruled the Japanese internment constitutional because they said it was, it was military. They necessity. ruled black people weren't here. Yeah, exactly. And they also ruled that even after the 14th Amendment, that, hey, black people are at equal protection. As long as they're given their own car, that's somehow equal protection. Go to the back of the bus. That's equal protection. It's total nonsense. And they also ruled and upheld um, um, eugenics for sterilization. You know, one generation or two generations. Yeah, look, 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 Marbury versus Madison. The Supreme Court all day can rule things that are unconstitutional. It's, it's, it's as legitimate as saying blacks our, our property and can be killed at will. It's a load of garbage and I disregard all of it because I have organic rights and liberty and I am a free man and I will fight to defend it. And also, we all have an obligation to look at the Constitution and say that's unconstitutional. That was the point that Madison and Jefferson made in the Kentucky Resolutions and Virginia Resolves, that the states have an obligation to declare something unconstitutional. And I would assert the same goes for the American people, and everyone has ever sworn that oath. Well, the Ninth, in, Amendment, in the, the Ninth Amendment says... I mean, in the Bill of Rights says that uh, that it reserved to the people, that even though it's not listed here, common sense says it, it's, it, it's so. Yeah, all your, yeah, d d the enumeration herein of certain rights does not, should not, shall not be interpreted as meaning we don't retain other rights. And what they meant by that is, hey, our rights don't come from the, from the Bill of Rights. Our rights come from God. We have a, you know, a sea of rights, a, an entire, you know, constellation of stars of rights. You can't just look at that and go, okay, you only have the rights listed here. We have all other rights retained. Yeah, it's because Jefferson said they'll try to twist things, so we've got to have this Ninth Amendment. In closing, uh, what about this unconfirmed report that you're looking into about uh, military? We know there was a stand down of some National Guard in Katrina. That's been confirmed. What about the latest? 
Well, this is this is kind of like a almost like a a, um, a Michael New situation, but it, it's a, it's an unconfirmed report we got on Facebook from someone in Indiana and said the International Guard had a whole unit that was part of an emergency response exercise and during this this exercise some officers gave them a survey and asked them to answer it and one of the questions was would they use lethal force against the American people and I don't know the rest of the context but it was apparently so bad that first one soldier refused to to uh, fill out the, the survey, uh, much like the survey back in 94 at 29 Palms. He refused to fill out the survey, and then he put his weapon down and stepped to the back of the formation, and then other soldiers in, in the formation followed suit until they all stepped back and said, we will not take part in this survey. That's what we were told. We have not confirmed this. The latest word from the source is that it's being handled internally. The two um, soldiers, a sergeant and a specialist that he was in contact with, have asked him to you know, not go further with this anymore. They, they, don't, they, want to, they don't want to go further making it public. They're saying it'll be handled internally and the officers will be investigated for giving the survey. So I don't know how, if we can say it's, it's truly credible. Well, yeah, I mean, that's standard, that's standard backing out of BS, but it's also standard of how they would handle it, covering it up. What's your gut tell you? Um, I think it's credible. I, 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 just by the way the guy uh, wrote and what he said, um, I think it's credible. And, and frankly, the fact that the, that the soldiers involved would like to just, you know, not have this be a public deal is, is you know, in, in exchange for not getting in trouble. That's what oftentimes happens, right? They say, look, just, just stop talking about it. Everything will be fine. Don't worry. Um, I think it's very credible. Um, but we can't confirm it yet. And, and we might not be able to because the source is telling us that now these soldiers don't want to go further. But it was a rumor about Katrina for years that that was a big standout and now it's been confirmed. That's right. We had an eyewitness who was there, Staff Sergeant Joshua May. And, and, we, and we have heard of other units that did the same thing. And that's the thing, is a lot happens behind the scenes. A lot happens that never gets on the news. We didn't know for a year that Fox Fallon of CENTCOM refused to attack Iran four years ago. But later it was confirmed. Stuart Rhodes will continue to talk to you and uh, look at OathKeepers.org for developments. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, there goes Stuart Rhodes with invaluable research. We're going to come back, continuing in this vein, with Floyd Morey, a Japanese-American, former member of the California State Legislature. He heads up um, the Japanese-American Citizens League. We've talked to him on the phone. We're going to talk to him here in a moment via Skype. He is very concerned about the NDAA and everything else that's happening. We'll talk to him after the break. It's InfoWars Nightly News, InfoWarsNews.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Don't forget, we are viewer-supported. You see it first and, and, and archive, but then it's posted on the web and millions see it throughout the week. And it is your support that makes all that possible. 15 cents a day, monthly membership, 595. Uh, the yearly membership is 40% off right now for the yearly membership at prisonplanet.tv. We'll be right back. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpers like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul. Do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Welcome back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. And we're joined now by the head of the Japanese American Citizens League, Floyd Mori. And he's had a distinguished um, a career in his own right as a mayor and then a member of the California uh, Assembly. And he has uh, served for a long time um, in the community and defending basic civil rights and human rights here in the United States. And he joins us uh, today to discuss a press release that they put out last week uh, concerning the move 
to have the National Defense Authorization Act uh, allow the military to operate on the streets of America and also intern Americans without charge, something that can happen here and has happened here to Japanese Americans, uh, citizens and members of the community who had their property taken uh, and, of course, uh, their uh, physical bodies taken uh, to camps here in the United States during World War II. And he joins us today uh, to discuss this. Sir, thanks for coming on with us. Good to be with you, Alex. Wow. So uh, you guys have spoken out against this. Uh, uh, what is your concern? Well, our concern stems back to 1942-41 uh, when uh, uh, similar rules were used to detain Japanese Americans uh, simply because they were Japanese Americans. There was no due process. And as you mentioned, uh, 120,000 were taken to these prison camps throughout the United States. And uh, it disrupted many lives. It ruined many lives for years to come. And uh, today, people still feel the impact of that incarceration. For those that don't know about the experience of Japanese Americans, can you give people uh, uh, basically a history lesson on what happened? Well, uh, when the war began, there was a lot of hysteria, a lot of fear. Uh, and prior to that, there was a lot of uh, bigotry against Asian Americans, specifically uh, Japanese Americans. Uh, they had become, begun to be a, an economic force in some areas in the United States, and, and there were uh, movements to not allow immigration. Uh, there were uh, laws that uh, did not allow Japanese to marry white people. Uh, things like this were happening in the country back in the 30s. And when the war began, uh, there were some that advocated to, uh, that Japanese Americans were a threat and they should be rounded up and put into these uh, prison camps uh, throughout the country. Uh, Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066 on February 19th of 1942, and that allowed the military to uh, round up Japanese Americans on the West Coast. and. Uh, they were temporarily put into uh, what were called assembly centers, and most of them were like horse stalls and race uh, race tracks or fairgrounds uh, for a couple months until the uh, camps were actually constructed, and then they were shipped off to these uh, camps for the duration of the war. Amazing, you know. I uh, learned that uh, Hitler's concentration camps were actually based on the way that Native Americans were rounded up in the 18 uh, and early 1900s and uh, put on basically reservations. And then during the first induction period, they would actually keep them in these barbed wire prison-like uh, enclosures so they could pick out who were the troublemakers and who, who wasn't. And now we've seen the Emergency Centers Establishment Act that basically has some of the same language what we saw for Japanese Americans, but just applied to the you know, public at large. And we see other moves. I mean, as you mentioned, the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, all of this unfolding. Uh, this just broke two days ago. I was sent by people inside Kellogg, Brown, and Root, and we've confirmed these documents are real, that they are now actually uh, getting the subcontractors to where on 72 hours notice, they can man civil unrest camps, and they're going to put people in sports stadiums first, like we've seen some of the Occupy Wall Street uh, in, in uh, Los Angeles taken to the uh, Dodger Stadium, uh, and that they will then be taken to these centers. And, and uh, perhaps I should email you those documents, but they're on Infowars.com and have been uh, confirmed. Uh, but, I mean, overall, we're seeing a lot of movement uh, here. Uh, I've also seen some newscasts where they've said, let's just put all the Muslims in camps if there's another attack. Why do you think all this uh, movement is taking place right now? Well, I think uh, some of the same kinds of uh, hysteria exist today. Uh, you know, uh, back in 1941-42, they rounded up dangerous people like uh, Buddhist priests and Japanese language teachers as dangerous people and put them in federal prison camps, actually, actually prisons, and uh, families knew not where they were sent, uh, and there was no due process. And, and this is the issue. The issue is that you know anybody uh, who is uh, on the soil of this great country uh, should be allowed due process uh, guaranteed by the Constitution. 
And uh, we are now moving back to the dark ages where uh, there are those that feel that uh, we have uh, the right today to uh, eliminate that due process, to forego that due process, forego the Constitution uh, in order to uh, satisfy the whims of uh, those in the military. Are you aware of, I mean, it was in the um, Houston Chronicle and Wall Street Journal in 2006 that KBR, Kellogg Brown and Root for Halliburton, was given the 300 an 80 plus million dollar contract to build camps for three million people. You know, that came out then, but but now we have the documents, we're putting them on screen while you're talking, sir, uh, where they're saying that, again, they're, they're preparing the actual contractors to run the barricades, the barbed wire, the jail guards, the uh, resettlement specialist uh, is uh, what they're uh, calling them. I mean, this is, this is pretty chilling news, and it hadn't gotten um, any attention. I'm, uh, I do uh, intend to send it to you, hopefully, because your group um, is able to get media attention. You can investigate it. Yeah, if this were the case, uh, you know, I have no uh, uh, information to that regard. But uh, if this were the case, it would be terrible. Uh, again, uh, the government actually apologized for what they did uh, to Japanese Americans. And they recognized that it was a mistake uh, that... Uh, there was hysteria and there was no political leadership at that time that caused that, that to happen. And uh, reparations, uh, redress was given to Japanese Americans uh, with the passage of an act of Congress in 1988. And uh, a letter was given to each uh, person that was incarcerated apologizing for what was done. So uh, that was done in order that we learn a lesson and uh, how unfortunate it is that uh, uh, we see that some have not learned that lesson and have forgotten history already uh, and the mistake that was made back then. Now, you're a former state legislator and, 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 and mayor, so you know how to read these documents, but Ron Paul came out, the ACLU came out, other Democrats came out and said, we've read this, it affects citizens this NDAA, then the media said, no, it doesn't. But then John McCain, Senator Graham and others came out and said, no, it does affect citizens. The whole world's a battlefield and we'll arrest citizens for no reason if we want. And Obama went further and said, we'll kill citizens like a Lockheed if we want. But he says he's going to veto the bill because the executive already has this power. I mean, w when you saw all that transpire, I know you put a letter out saying it was dangerous, but, but I mean, personally, what's your view on this? Were, I mean, were you shocked by how brazen this was? Uh, yes, I am shocked, particularly by those that uh, are in authority and ought to know better and uh, supposedly uh, are operating under the Constitution of this great country. And so, yeah, it's a shock to us as a community. It should be a shock to everybody in this country. And I think uh, uh, citizens ought to be uh, speaking very loudly to their senators and to their congressmen. Uh, the the bill is now on the House side, and I think similar provisions, even stronger provisions, are in that bill. And so we are urging, I just sent a letter out to uh, uh, the House of Representatives to, uh, again, oppose those provisions in this uh, defense authorization bill. Amazing. Going back in time, uh, because I, you know, years ago I read a book about it and seen some newscasts, but correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you know, a lot of the hardworking and smart Japanese on the West Coast owned companies, uh, uh, huge farms, uh, shipping outfits, fishing outfits, warehouses, and didn't a lot of the property basically get confiscated while Japanese Americans were locked up in camps? Yes, uh, you know, they had no means to earn money, and so a lot was foreclosed, people lost their homes, their businesses. Uh, you know, my, my uh, wife's father was one of those who lost everything and uh, not only lost uh, the economic elements but uh, I think he lost a lot of self-respect uh, because of what the government did and uh, never really recovered from that incident until the day he passed away. Wow, that's terrible. You know, there are German towns all around Texas. Some of my family you know, is German on my mom's side and you know, lived in those towns since the 1830s and 40s. They didn't get rounded up, though, even though they were German-speaking during World War II. Was it because Japanese had, had brown skin? Well, I, yeah, I think, you know, Japanese uh, had a different culture. Uh, many had a different religion. Uh, does it sound familiar as today? 
uh, and many had a different color of skin. And so they were easy to identify, and uh, so they were rounded up. I interestingly, uh, you know, there were other Asian Americans in the country at this that time, and uh, uh, they were not a threat, uh, just Japanese Americans. Incredible. Uh, well, well you, I was going to ask you where you're going from here, but you've written a letter, uh, a new letter uh, uh, to the Congress. Um, what did you say to them in that letter? And uh, can folks go to the JACL.org, Japanese American Citizens League website, and read that? Uh, yes, it will be up on the website uh, by the end of this week. Uh, but basically the same letters we sent to the Senate, that it was, it's a dangerous precedent, that it's contrary to our Constitution, and that uh, we should eliminate that from the bill. Okay, uh, now I'm, I'm going to email you, and I should have done this before the interview, but I, but I asked the guys to get you a couple days ago, and they got you pretty quickly, so I think that's why I, I, uh, I forgot to tell them to send you all the new information that just broke two days ago, because it's, it's happened so quick. But at, And we've been putting it on screen while you've been talking, so the viewers have now seen it. Uh, but, but after I send you this, this FEMA camp information, with, with uh, all, all the accompanying documents, and if it turns out to be true what I've told you about, n not only have they built the camps, which has been admitted in the last decade, now they're preparing to man them. Uh, what do you plan to do if indeed this is true? Well, if this is actually true, I'm certainly we'll, uh, we'll look into it. And uh, if this is actually true, we will do whatever we can with uh, uh, colleagues, colleagues that we have here and coalitions that we have here to oppose and to uh, make sure it doesn't happen. You know, it seems like any time we're in a depression, too, which we're going into, we were in one at the beginning of World War II, it's, it's just a nice thing politically to demonize groups as well. You know, it's, the, it's their fault. And it's just scary how history repeats itself. It is kind of scary. And uh, you go back uh, to the, you know, World War II years and you know, all these Japanese Americans were rounded up, but uh, in the end, uh, there was never one conviction of a Japanese American for espionage or sabotage or any war crime whatsoever. So uh, uh, all these innocent people, without any due process, were rounded up. Uh, lives were taken away, and as we've uh, discussed, uh, economic means were destroyed and taken away. Wow all in the name of uh, uh, national security, and it didn't do any good to national security. Amazing. Uh, last question, uh, Floyd Mori is our guest. He's the head of the Japanese American Citizens League. His website's been up on the screen, but it's jacl.org for the visually impaired out there, jacl.org. Uh, Reading a book about this or interviewing a few other Japanese American uh, uh, you know, victims of this who I have over the years, uh, I mean, still, there's so many stories, so many things that happened, but uh, what I find particularly horrifying is the way people were picked up. But, but, but uh, I, mean, I mean, heading up a group, you know, that obviously hearing the stories, talking to people, your wife's family, uh, can you describe for us how the roundups happened and, and then, and then uh, abuses that may have happened inside these facilities? Well, uh, they were given two weeks' notice to... Uh, take care of their personal business, and they were to take whatever they could carry, and uh, they were put into, uh, in some cases, trucks, and taken to assembly centers, and when they were actually taken to the camps, they were put in trains that had shields so people could not look in to see who it was, and then unloaded and uh, taken to these camps. Uh, within the camps, uh, um, they did the best they could, but, uh, you know, being confined, there were issues that occurred there. Not not brutality from uh, the army. I think uh, as the time went by, uh, the military began to understand that these people were not a threat, and began to treat them a lot more humanely. And so, but there were you know disagreements. Uh, why are we here? Uh, as you know, many uh, volunteered for the army out of these camps to go fight the war uh, in Europe. And also many volunteered to the military intelligence service to help the troops in the Pacific. And uh, I think it's, it was uh, Colin Powell who I heard quoted saying that the Japanese American military intelligence service probably saved a million lives and shortened the war by a year because of the work that they did in intelligence uh, in the Pacific. So 
uh, out of these camps. They showed patriotism, and uh, uh, I think because of what they did, and as you know, uh, just uh, last month, uh, we celebrated here in Washington, D.C., the uh, presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal of Honor to uh, the Japanese-American veterans of World War II. Wow. Well, Floyd Morey, thank you so much for joining us. It just makes me think, though, that even though the Army knew within just a few months that, that, that this was all just a, a hysteria, they still, though, kept everybody in there, even though their sons were being sent off and volunteering for some of the most dangerous duty in Europe. And then they still just kept them there to the end of the war because the government didn't want to admit that they'd done something wrong. Uh, that, uh, hopefully we can turn this new hysteria around uh, before it goes too far. But uh, I, I really do appreciate uh, you joining us today. And I, I hope to speak to you in the next few weeks after you've seen these documents. Thank you. Thank Look you. forward to it. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Well, man, I tell you, these are times that are really, really creepy and scary. And that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. I'm going to send him the Halliburton and Brown and Root documents and uh, hopefully their organization can you know, get more attention on this than I can. There's been a media blackout since we got this information, um, but uh, back in 2006 when we got the documents on Halliburton and KBR, it, it did spur some national attention, and hopefully that will uh, happen here this time. Um, until tomorrow night, uh, I wish you all well, but uh, please spread the word about all the news that we've been covering, and also remember we have 44% off uh, right now on a yearly membership at PrisonPlanet.tv. If you're watching this out there on the web and believe in this type of information getting out to the public, and we will also air this interview tomorrow on the syndicated radio broadcast. God bless you all.